Jim Murphy here, your fix it guru. This time on you break it, you fix it. We're going to fix the service trailer brake warning light on the dash of my 2008 Chevy Silverado 2500. Let's get to it. After two minutes of internet research, the internet told me that I needed to replace this relay and this fuse to get rid of the service trailer brake warning on my dash. I'll put the link to the parts in the description. So my truck's a 2008 and I was able to locate this relay on the inside of the driver frame rail. And the two bolts for it are right there and there. It's really cruddy. One tech tip, wash your truck before you do this. Don't be too proud to use penetrating oil. It'll save a lot of swearing, a lot of broken bolts, a lot of time. Just spray it on the night before you do the project and you'll thank yourself. To replace this relay, you can actually loosen the bolts from the outside. If I can get a good shot here. You can see how the holes get a little bigger to the right of these. You can actually slide that whole relay and then just drop it out the back side. So you don't have to take the bolts all the way out. You can just drop it out and then clean all the mud out of it like I'm going to have to. Okay, I've got the bolts loose. I'm going to try to slide it. No, I can't dip it dirt. There it goes. And then drop it out the back. And it is plastered with mud and salt. Alright, so it's loosened out. I'll be able to get it from the inside now. Alright, I've got the relay out in my hand on the driver's side of the truck. This is the inside of the frame rail, right above the rear axle. Now I just have to unplug it. These plugs are a pain in the butt to get undone, but if you can see the little... Again, wash your truck before you do this. This stuff never breaks when it's nice and warm and sunny and dry out. There's a little plastic tab in there, in this hole, that you can pry up on. You can try to push up on the back, but sometimes you just end up breaking the plug. I usually just stick a flathead screwdriver there in my pocket knife and just undo that and slide it out. Alright, now that you got the old part out, you can start switching the hardware onto the new part. And I like to examine the new part versus the old one to make sure it's definitely the right part. I've had some parts that have just subtle differences and put the new one in and have to take it back out. Um, this would be a good time to clean the threads up on these bolts. Smarter man than I would do that, but I'm not going to do that. Alright, we're back into the truck with a new part. We're going to plug it in. Make sure the hardware is facing the right way so it goes to the frame rail the correct way. And it's hard to do this one handed. There we go. Make sure that Connect your clicks. I don't want to do this again. Ah. Okay, the new part slid right into the holes. I just got to tighten these bolts up and then we're done with this end of the truck. Alright, now we're going to replace a 30 amp J case fuse. See that on the camera there. Mine doesn't look bad, but I actually ripped the case off of it years ago trying to get the uh, trailer brake controller to work, and I couldn't see through the top of the case because it's all chalked up. So I'm going to replace mine anyways, and the internet's never wrong, so they had to be right in replacing this. That is it. Fuses in, relays in, lights off. And if you're like me and you have a trailer behind you at least once a week, the brakes are pretty important. So it's nice to have that be a nice, easy, cheap fix. I'll put the link to the parts in the description. Please like and subscribe. And I'm Jim Murphy, the Fix It Guy. I'll see you next time on You Break It, You Fix It. That was an easy, cheap fix. I'll put the link in the description. And that was my hood opening again.